G'day mates, Vegan Bandit here. Today I wanted to bring you some gameplay from a recent game I had on Gadget in the Offlane. Uh, I thought it did really well. It's one of my best games as Gadget recently. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to work out whether the Gadget Offlane is... I mean, people laugh at this pick. People get upset at me in the draft lobby and they threaten they're going to uh, troll and dodge and all that kind of stuff. But I think it's been doing really well. And I'm trying to work out, is it because... Uh, is it because, well, maybe it's luck, maybe uh, it's just because I'm a, I'm a pretty decent gadget. Um, but is it because the gadget in the offlane is actually good and underrated? Or maybe people just aren't really respecting the gadget offlane. They think it's not going to do so well, so they play a bit too aggressive or something and not really respect the poke, and they lose because of it. So, yeah, I'd, I'm curious to hear what you guys think, uh, either before or after you watch this game. Um, but I think it's been doing really well. So, just wanted to bring you guys this footage, talk a little bit about my build, my thought process. And, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look here. So, from the get-go, I'm just using my mana, using the autos to poke this uh, Severog. Kind of, you know, show him his boss. Um, so... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to zone him out of XP. Push, this lane will push towards me a little bit in the first minute or two because I'm autoing him, uh, which is fine. It will push back towards him, but I'll, I'll get XP a bit faster than he will, and I can use that to poke him even harder. Just for, really forcing him back right now. Uh, if you haven't noticed already, the names on both teams. So my team is... Uh, and Four diamonds and one master player. We're versing four plats and one diamond player. So that's probably why this game isn't fully representative. Um, but I am a diamond player laning against a diamond player. So I think at least this lane in the early stages of the game should be hopefully pretty representative. Severog being, I think, a pretty strong offlane pick at the moment. So uh, for me to be doing well against that, I think, should maybe indicate a little bit about Gadget's power. Uh, so here my jungler's looking for a gank, and I think he's probably stayed a little bit too long. I do leave there just to pret or pretend to leave, just to try and entice the Severog out of the tower. See if G Grux can get a pull on him, but not happening at the moment. So yeah, the Grux definitely overstays here a little bit. Uh, the Severog does have uh, his healing towers already. So that's negating a little bit of my poke, but he just re can't really step out that far. Okay, so in terms of build, I started with Fun of Experience, just to get some extra levels early on. <clears throat> um, and when I hit level 3, in instead of taking all 3 spells, I take Bomb level 1, uh, my right click level 2, and then my Bomb again level 3. Unless I need it, I need a level, like emergency level up my speed gate to get out or something. Um, but generally if I'm just focusing on poking, I'll take the Bomb level 3, because at level 2, uh, Sticky Mine... A level 2 Sticky Mine at level 3 does a lot of damage. Especially if you're out-leveling your lane opponent like I am right now. Um, but then after that, I one card I really, really love, and I think is pretty underrated, is Lightstep Vanguard. So that's the, the card that uh, allows you to teleport to an allied structure, uh, an allied tower or inhibitor. Uh, or even the core, actually, I believe. Uh, I've never used it that way, but I think you can do that as well. Um, but yeah, it gives you, I mean, it gives a little bit of mana, but mostly three, three intellect points. It's mostly for the, uh, the active there. Um, so I think, I think that's super useful for a bunch of reasons. You can burn through your mana and poke really hard, teleport back to base and then teleport back in a lane. Um, keep poking away. Uh, you know, you can use it to push a lane, teleport back. You can use it to get to a, a lane to defend. One of my favorite things to do with it, especially on Gadget, is because Gadget has such a great teamfight ulti, uh, you can, if you see a teamfight breaking out under one of your towers, or even if one of your allies are getting ganked, you can teleport to that friendly tower, and then you can, you know, you drop your ult, and that's a massive, a massive de spike of damage that it's not expecting. So Grux comes in for the, uh, the slow, the, sorry, the pull here. Um, could have speed gated us to get closer, and maybe gotten us in range, but I'll just use the slow there. Uh, so not going to quite kill him, but again, zoning him out. After Lightstep Vanguard, 
or I should say my final build is uh, Atomic Soldier, Sleeper Agent, and Yomi Spectre. And I'll talk a little bit about why I take Yomi Spectre later on in the game when I, when I pick it up. But I think that's also pretty good on Gadget and maybe a bit underrated. Uh, so I've gone Intellect Order and uh, that allows me to pick up wards as well, which is uh, a pretty nice bit of utility there. So I think this is where I pick up my um, Lightset Vanguard, and yes it is, I pick up Lightset Vanguard and wards. It's funny, the, uh, the, the T1 tower on the right side lane is uh, it's kind of behind another tower, so it's like hard to teleport to, you gotta like move a little bit and line it up correctly. Um, which is a bit annoying. I think there should be something about Lightset Vanguard being usable on the map. Another thing that I think uh, they could do to improve Lightset Vanguard. I think probably people don't even run this card. So, you know, I've I don't think I've ever seen someone else run this card to my knowledge. But um, there's no indication as to when someone's going to teleport into a tower to your team and to the enemy team. So you could be teleporting in, and you just the, the enemy team just has no idea, uh, and you just appear there and you know start dropping your spells so it's pretty valuable now i dropped a ward late there so i didn't see the rampage coming he probably could have come up and ganked me to be honest he probably should have severog was going pretty ham on me i was overstepping a little bit uh but i you know i dropped my kit and was just able to get away pretty easily burning through that mana to poke him out i know i can just teleport back to base teleport right back in no worries I think that might even be what I'm doing right here. Again, gotta get that angle right to teleport to that right tower. Yeah, it's gotta be gotta be some option to click on the map or something. If any of you guys have played League of Legends or watched someone play it, uh, you might be familiar with the teleport summoner spell. Which is uh, often taken by, um, I guess, I guess that kind of the off lane or the solo lane equivalent to League of Legends, the top lane, um, because you know it, it just it uh, complements their kit so well. So that you know they'll be split pushing or defending a side lane, and if a team fight breaks out, uh, they can all you know they can teleport into the fight. So a lot of lot of value there. Maybe a bit of overkill with the ult there, but team rotates for that gank, pick it up, and we can pick up this tower. So what I'm going to be looking to do now, as offlane gadget, is now I picked up this tower early. So I'm going to be looking to really utilize that lifestyle vanguard. I'm going to want to roam, uh, start taking fights on other sides of the map, help out my team. And if the Severog ever does push that, that right tower back in, that right lane back into my tower, I can be there in a, a split, I can be there in one second because I have lifestyle vanguard ready to go. Uh, I can just teleport right back to that tower. I think I was spam pinging my team to pick a fight here on left because I was teleporting in. Uh, again, I mean, it, it probably even your team not being used to someone taking lights of Vanguard is going to be like, why are you spamming to go in left? And they might just not listen. Uh, but... Yeah, if you're on comms with your team and you say, hey, I've got Lysa Vanguard, like, pick a fight or bait him in or something, that's, that's massive. So I can see the Sev is, uh, he's freezing land on right. I do have a massive CS lead on him right now. Uh, it's, uh, at the moment, it's 16 CS. It was bigger before, but he's now just kind of freezing and slow pushing that lane. Um, so he will slowly catch up, but I'm now just over the map, helping my team pick up kills. I think I was being cautious there because I knew the Fae was there and I wanted to play it a bit safe. Cool, so I picked up the double kill. Meanwhile, the Severog's doing nothing at the moment.
Severog's pushing that lane up. No worries. I'll just teleport right back in. I can defend this easy. Even punish him a little bit for it. Yep, jungle comes in for the gank. Mid rotates, easy. Not really, not really fair on him. Uh, his team's doing it. I mean, they're probably losing across the map anyway, but his team's doing a pretty poor job at helping him out. Uh, I think my health and mana here are bugged, and one trick I learned recently is you can go minus 10 and plus 10, and that usually fixes those kind of visual bugs. Yep, there we go. Getting through my mana, getting this lane pushed, so I know the Severog is going to have to just come back and deal with that. And meanwhile, I can teleport back to base and teleport anywhere on the map I want. Help out there. So I think I saw a fight breaking out mid. That's okay. I can be there like significantly quicker than I could if I was just walking. Uh, okay, so Yomi Spectre. The reason I take this on Gadget, and I think it's pretty strong on her, is so when you deal uh, an instance of damage to an enemy, it uh, reduces their ability armor by 12 um, for 6 seconds. So what I often try and combo is I'll put a bomb on someone, and before that bomb goes off, I'll make sure they get a tick of my slow, um, preferably, or sometimes my ulti. Uh, and that means they take a lot more damage from my bomb. And you'll see, la you'll see late game, like I'm one of my bombs with even just one tick of my my slow is doing like half of their health. So here I get a I get a pretty nice ulti here, uh, and that's just shredding through them right now because that's um, that's my Yomi Spectre doing work and. That's my ulti doing its uh, uh, ramping damage. The other good thing about this card is uh, it gives you vision, true vision of the target for 6 seconds. So, uh, like if, for example, if an enemy Wraith uses an ult defensively to get out, you just drop an ult or a slow on their position, you're going to see everyone for 6 seconds. That's a lot of team team um, utility there. So I see the uh, I see the Severogs pushing right, so I'm just going to recall and I'm going to teleport right back to that right tower. He probably thought he was going to get some damage, maybe even get the tower, because he knew where I was on the other side of the map, but I just got there so quickly. Sometimes I wish I could see people's face and be like, how the hell did he just get there? And then they see my card. But uh, yeah, I, I really like Lifeset Vanguard. So yeah, we, um, I think one one problem people have with Gadget offlane, the reason why they get so upset when they see you pick it, is uh, they say, oh, she doesn't have any CC or no hard CC at least. Um, but she does have two slow, two AOE slows, and the speed gate is really nice. If you if you can if you can drop that effectively in a team fight, you know, if you're chasing uh, enemies or you're um, trying to get away. That can that can really help and do a lot of work. So I was probably playing a little bit aggressive there, and the Severog did make me force my ult out. Um, but luckily, I can just teleport back to base and teleport back in. And the wave is all the way back at his tower anyway. Um, but yeah, Gadget provides a lot of value, and if you combine that with the uh, Light Set Vanguard, you can do so much work in the offlane pushing and farming that, and then just teleport into a team fight uh, behind a tower, you know, to a friendly tower or something. I think that just complements us so well. And you, yeah, Speed Gadget as well, but just rotating around the map is so good. If you get Astral Leap as well, which I sometimes curve into, then you're just super mobile. So I think the Severog is catching up in farm by now. He's at 74 to my to my 80. Ah, uh, oh, I did not know the river minion counts as a CS. That's good to know. 
Um, but he's pretty obsolete. He's got two deaths. Uh, he's not really getting anything. He hasn't even got my right tower yet. Probably could, he could be rotating for fights a little bit more. Um, but he's kind of undervalued. Like, I've been, I guess I've been thinking about what could the Severog have done differently in order to counter what I was doing. Um, but, yeah, I'm uh, not really sure. So, yeah, I, I screwed up my teleport there. I teleported the wrong tower and probably lost the tower as a result. It's a bit unfortunate, but immediately go to work on the Severog. Keeping my distance until you'll see in a sec I stupidly step forward. Um, it doesn't matter too much. I'm kind of like forcing, I guess forcing him to take me on for a bit and then just misses that subjugate. And then I see my team rotating nicely, doing their job, unlike his team. So with Severog dead, I have just a multitude of options here. I can shove this way in as hard as I can, burn all my mana, which is what I'm doing. Teleport back to base, teleport anywhere on the map I want. Uh, you know, and I've got, I've got a bunch of time before I even spawn, so yeah, there's a lot we can do with that. If Fangtooth wasn't up, I'd probably, uh, as soon as I got that kill, I would ping for my team to start Fangtooth. I'd teleport to base, teleport to mid, and I'm there in case the enemy team tries to fight for it. I think here I picked up uh, Astral Leap. That's actually bugged again, so I'm just going to back and forward 10 seconds. Huh, I didn't fix it, but I definitely have Astral Leap there, so I'm just have to take my word for it. Now I'm going to try this again because I think everyone's like missing health or something now. Has that fixed it? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there you see that mobility. I can get from like mid lane to the side lane in like three or four seconds, not even. It's crazy. So I'd like to partially attribute that pull to my slow there, zoning her out. <laughs> I think by this point, it's definitely not a fair representation of how a uh, solo lane gadget would usually go. Uh, I mean, my team's been winning across the map, and now the game's across the map. <clears throat> but the Severog's finally here. Um, there's not much you can do. He's under, he's under farm. Under leveled. I've got three levels on him, four kills on him, and 10 CS on him. So, by this point of the game, he's pretty much useless. Also, one thing you might not know about Gadget, um, you can use your speak out on her multiple times. You can, uh, if you put a speak out, okay, so what I mean by that is, if you put the speak out down, you run through it and get the initial speed boost, which decays over something like four seconds. Uh, but the, I don't know how, exactly how long the speed gate lasts for. It's about four seconds, I think. But you can like run back through that speed gate and reapply the uh, speed application, which brings it back up to the full amount. Um, so yeah, you could like if you're trying to run forward a little bit and then you decide to turn around and run back, make sure you run through that speed gate because uh, you can. It definitely applies twice. So get back and pick up that last step vanguard again and I'm going to teleport to right lane. So what you'll see me do sometimes is so I take last step vanguard when it curves but also if I see a situation that would be a good opportunity to use last step vanguard you know I'll take it even if it's not necessarily the best curve option. Like I just recalled and I don't I don't know what my point is. What have I got? 20. Maybe it is the best curve option at the moment. Um, I can't do mass. Uh, Astral Leap would would also be purchasable, but took the last of Vanguard because I just wanted to get to 
get to that right lane and defend that tower. You know, if you recall and you see a fight break out, just grab it. I mean, you have like it's it's better than getting to the fight ten seconds late with a bit of extra power. So just waited for Wraith to drop that speed gate for us. Uh, so that's Severog dead. I can just shove this right away as hard as I want. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is go ahead and hard set that and then rotate over to the prime that, that everyone's, my team's starting. And I like I like playing kind of a zoning role with Gadget. She has pretty good damage, but if you have a carry and you know you probably don't need that damage at this stage of the game. So I just prefer to like work on zoning with my uh, with my slow. You drop a slow at a choke point like this or you threaten your ulti at a choke point like this. Like no team's going to really want to walk through that in a group. Don't forget to speed get your minions towards the tower, especially like when you're waiting for your minions to get to a tower and you're just ready to do damage to it. You're gonna you're gonna pick up a second or so there by speed getting your minions in, and that's that's worth it if you have the mana. I run um, mana fountain uh, on gadget, so always have that mana. Kind of disappointed you didn't see how much damage that bomb there did, because that was that was gonna be a perfect illustration of the value of Yomi Spectre. Um, but I think it did over half her health because I got that one tick of the, uh, one tick of my, oh, I can't remember now, was it an ulti or slow? Got one tick of that off. Um, and that was enough for the bomb to do significantly more damage. Game is pretty much over. Here you see my team getting kind of greedy. I'm just chilling back. <laughs> but uh, this is actually my second recording of this video because uh, amazingly I forgot to hit record the first time. So I was trying to make sure I've covered off all the points I wanted to cover off since I've said them all before tonight. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, yeah, so I, I've recently been putting more work into my YouTube channel, uh, particularly my um, some videos on Paragon and Fortnite. But... Uh, if, you've, if you've enjoyed this, then make sure to subscribe because I'm trying to do more of these. Um, and l let me know what kind of kinds of videos you'd like to see. I've been trying to do a mix between like montages and f funny stuff and also um, like some guides. Uh, so yeah, let me, let me know what you guys would like to see and I'll try and keep that in mind. Uh, if you have enjoyed this gadget f uh, f gameplay, then you could also check out my recent gadget montage I did, um, which I'll, uh, I'll link down there in the left. In the bottom left. Uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed this, then uh, please do subscribe, like the video, and uh, let me know what you guys think. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.